Google has just dropped a new model named Gemini. Well, it seems it's the birth of the new era, the Gemini era. The speciality of the model seems to be that of multimodality, with it being able to reason seamlessly across text, images, video, audio, and even code. It's only the first version of Gemini from Google and it seems to be the first model to outperform human experts on the MMLU dataset, which stands for Massive Multitask Language Understanding. Now, MMLU is a dataset with 57 tasks, including elementary mathematics, US history, computer science, law, and many more. The main reason for this model to be introduced was for the models to possess extensive world knowledge and problem-solving ability in order to crack this data set. So if Gemini surpasses human ability in this data set, that's really great. The evaluations clearly indicate that Gemini has surpassed GPT-4's performance on this data set. Well, it doesn't stop there. It seems to be better than GPT-4 in all of these data sets except for the common sense reasoning data set for everyday tasks. Because the emphasis is on multimodality, they compare Gemini with GPT-4, which is the multimodal counterpart from OpenAI, and show that it performs better in every single modality, be it image, video, or even audio. So let's jump into the technical report and find out uh, more details about them. The technical report starts with an evaluation of the cross-modal reasoning capabilities. For example, let's say a teacher has drawn a physics problem of a skier going down a slope and a student has to work through a solution to it as shown here. The model first needs to understand the figure that the student has drawn and then the model needs to understand the messy handwriting that the student has written, then the problem formulation and identify the specific steps of reasoning where the student went wrong in solving the problem, and then finally give the worked out solution to the problem. So this kind of reasoning capability enables building uh, generic agents, and they say that the AlphaCode team has built the AlphaCode 2, a new Gemini-powered agent that combines Gemini's reasoning capabilities with search and tool use to excel at solving competitive programming problems. So the rest of the report is organized as a model architecture, training infrastructure, and training data set. So let's look into the model architecture like any other state-of-the-art uh, LLMs or multimodal models, Gemini also is built on top of the transformer decoder that is enhanced with improvements in architecture and model optimization. So they've released the model in three sizes. First is Ultra, which is the most capable model that delivers a state-of-the-art performance across a wide range of highly complex tasks, including reasoning and multimodality. And then the second one is a slightly smaller model, which is a performance optimized model, both in terms of the cost and the latency. And this model exhibits strong reasoning performance and broad multimodal capabilities. Finally, the third one is the Nano, which is the smallest model to run on device and it's trained two versions based on the memory that you have at your disposal. And these models are trained by distilling from large Gemini models. And it's also four bit quantized for deployment and provides best in class performance. So the Gemini model is inspired by their previous work on Flamingo, Coca and Polly and the uh, main point to note is that it's trying to accommodate textual input interleaved with audio and visual inputs. 
which means it can take a mix of uh, different modalities and can also output a mix of modalities. The model is designed to support 32,000 context length and is trained on Google's uh, TPUs. And it also employs efficient multi-query attention rather than just the self-attention used by the transformers. Moving on to the training infrastructure, the Gemini models are trained using T TPU V5E and TPU V4. And, and these accelerators are distributed across multiple data centers. And these accelerators are again deployed in superparts of uh, a cube, let's say four by four by four. Just imagine GPUs distributed in a cube of four by four by four. So these TPUs are typically connected this way using optically connected switches. Uh, and so that is what makes them a cube of four by four by four. So think of each node as a four by four by four TPU. And in turn, 64 of this lead to 4096 TPU V4 chips. So to combine these superparts distributed in different data centers, they use Google's intra-cluster and inter-cluster networks and exploit model parallelism to connect within the superparts and data parallelism across superparts to synchronize the training. They promote jacks along the way and say that single controller programming model of jacks and pathways enables a single Python process to orchestrate the entire training, thereby simplifying the entire development workflow. Conventional checkpointing would have been impractical for the scale of this training, and so they use redundant in-memory copies of the model state, and if at all the hardware fails, they recover directly from an intact model replica. One of the other problems they faced with training seems to be the silent data corruption. So STC is when a processing unit or a memory unit has undergone some data corruption so that it changes some numeric value. For example, the gradient computed in BRAC propagation could be 0 0.123, but due to SDC, this value could be stored as 0 0.129 and this error could silently propagate over time unless the hardware is fixed. Moving on to the training dataset, they use both multimodal and multilingual dataset, and they pre-train using data from web, such as documents, books, code, and the dataset obviously includes all sort of modalities like images, audio, and video. So one thing of interest is the use of sentence piece tokenizer, which is a sort of specialized tokenizer. And they find that training the tokenizer on a large sample of the entire training corpus improves the inferred vocabulary and subsequently improves the model performance. And one of the other interesting points is that the smaller models are trained for significantly more tokens to improve performance for a given inference budget. And they also apply quality filters and safety filters in order to make sure that the quality of the data set is good and also the data set doesn't have any harmful content that can train the model, which in turn can generate harmful content. So that's pretty much it in terms of the uh, training data set. Uh, let's move on to the some of the capabilities uh, of the model. In terms of the model performance, the model seems to be able to excel in competitive programming, particularly when it's allowed to check and repair the answers. So in this example, if we ask for the code for Google Maps web app to spot trains in London, then it churns out the code in no time, and there we have it. When it comes to dealing with documents like academic papers, Gemini seems to be able to pick relevant papers out of several papers and it even extract key data from them.
because it's multimodal, it's even able to update and come up with its own figures based on the updated data. So Gemini not just understands audio, but is able to understand subtle differences in pronunciations to reason which is a native pronunciation of a word. How to pronounce the word Lunar January in Chinese? Option A, Zheng Yue. Option B, Zheng Yue. Which one is correct? Which tone is the correct tone for the first character? Option A, the first character is pronounced with the first tone. I hope that was a useful walkthrough of the Gemini technical report and a quick demo of its uh, capabilities. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next. Take care.